After exposing Meta's $14 billion talent hunt for human brains, we're diving into a revelation that might buy humanity some time. Tech billionaires are betting on the wrong approach to AI advancement. While Zuckerberg and others throw billions at talent acquisition and massive data centers, the real breakthroughs in self-improving AI are coming from unexpected places, and they're not based on brute force scaling. The Tech Brothers' obsession with bigger is better is showing diminishing returns, and that might just give us some more time to prepare for the inevitable digital apocalypse. Now hear me out on this, please, because I think you will agree with me once we get to the end, okay? And this is a short one, so stick around. And if you would, hit the like and subscribe button, please. The dominant narrative in AI development has been simple. Bigger is better. Bigger data centers, bigger, uh, more expensive talent, larger models, more parameters. This is why Meta is spending $14 billion on talent acquisition while Microsoft restarts nuclear reactors to power their data centers. But what if this entire approach is fundamentally misguided? What if the path to more advanced AI isn't through brute force scaling, but through more elegant, efficient approaches? There's one word that keeps popping up over and over and over again, and if you've been paying attention over the last month or so to all the headlines and all the videos and everything, you hear it in the words efficiency, efficiency, every headline, efficiency. Well, how is spending billions of dollars on data centers that consume enormous amounts of power, water, and everything else efficient? Sakana AI already responsible for the first AI-authored scientific paper to pass peer review, and that's a big deal. It's an AI-authored paper that passed peer review. They just published, published research that exposes the diminishing returns of the Tech Brothers approach. Their breakthrough proves that smaller models with better architecture can outperform massive models that cost hundreds of times more to develop and run. Sakana's approach flips traditional AI training on its head. Instead of using reinforcement learning to teach AI models to solve problems directly, they've created what they call reinforcement learned teachers, or RLT, if you like acronyms. They're small AI models specifically designed to teach other AI models. The results demolish the bigger is better narratives. This tiny 7 billion parameter teacher model, about 100 times smaller than the industry's largest models, outperforms massive 671 billion parameter models at teaching students a student AIs to reason through complex math and science problems. When tested against challenging benchmarks, student models taught by Sakana's small teachers scored 49.5% overall, compared to 46% for students taught by the massive DeepSeq R1 models. But here's the most revealing part. Training a 32 billion parameter model with Sakana's method took less than a day on a single computer node. While traditional methods would have taken months on the same hardware, and we're talking about, you know, the difference between a $10,000 training run and a $500,000 run at least. You know, and the cheaper approach is getting better results. This doesn't mean we should be complacent. As physicist Sabine uh, Hossenfelder recently documented, and I'm sorry if it's Sabine, I don't know. We're getting closer to the intelligence explosion that researchers have long feared, where AI systems learn to improve themselves recursively, potentially leading to superintelligence. DeepMind's Alpha Evolve, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, has already invented a better matrix uh, multiplication method that no human had discovered, leading to a 1% reduction in Gemini's training time. Tuffa Labs researchers have de demonstrated a mechanism where language models can self-improve by simplifying questions, checking answers, and building up complexity. And other researchers have shown models can edit their own hyperparameters and even rewrite their own code. And this is what I've been talking about. And, and I'm sorry if I wasn't making myself clear in my previous episodes. I think that the tech tech guys, and, and you can say they don't know what they're doing, but they're, they're in charge. The Sam Altman's of the world, the, the Zuckerberg's of the world, the Elon Musk's, uh, they're the ones that are holding all of this in their hand, in the palm of their hands, when you think about it. I mean, they're having meetings with the president. They're having meetings with Congress. Uh, they're the ones steering all of this, and I think they're going in the wrong direction. Now, what do I know? I'm just, just, just a guy. 
But I'm not the only one saying this, and that's what I've been trying to get across. It's not that I don't think the AI revolution is coming. I think we have more time than what I originally thought because the tech brothers, I guess I call them, probably say that too much, but I think they're going in the wrong direction. You know, how again, efficiency. That, this is not efficient, spending billions on data centers out in some desert. Uh, or out wherever they're building them. It, it, it's not efficient. That's not the most efficient way to do it. And if efficiency is the way forward, then they're on the wrong path and they won't admit it. Why won't they admit it? Why won't they change course? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. I don't know why they won't change course. Maybe they're, they're all afraid that it's the right course. And if they change course, they'll be left out. I don't know. I don't know. It, it makes no sense to me. But again, this isn't the first time that somebody in charge like government or, or powerful executives haven't made sense to me. And the most advanced example is the darwin Godel machine, which can edit its own Python code. This system evaluates mutations on standard benchmarks and keeps the best ones, showing significant improvement over time. What's important to note here is that none of these approaches rely primarily on massive model size or computational resources. They're based on algorithmic improvements and clever architecture, exactly the opposite of the brute force scaling approach that tech giants are pursuing. To me, this exposes the diminishing returns that I've been talking about that the tech bros don't want to admit. While companies like Meta and Google are spending billions on talent and infrastructure to build ever larger models, the actual improvements in capability are increasingly marginal. They're diminishing returns. Remember Wang's admission from the last episode? You can stand back and squint and the AI models seem really smart, but if you actually try to use it to do any of a number of key workflows in your job, you realize that it's quite deficient, which I guess is a nice way to say it sucks. This explains why we're seeing this bizarre disconnect, astronomical investments in AI with relatively modest real-world results. The tech boys, the tech brothers, are pursuing a brute force approach that's hitting fundamental limitations, while more innovative approaches are showing that intelligence isn't just about scale. It's about architecture and method. Even Google's CEO Eric Schmidt acknowledges this shift. He recently said, In the industry, it is believed that somewhere around five years, no one knows exactly, the systems will begin to be able to write their own code. That is, they literally will take their code and make it better, and of course, that's recursive. But crucially, this recursion isn't happening through bigger models. It's happening through more elegant approaches that focus on self-modification rather than raw computational power. Sakana's AI's Darwin Gold Machine demonstrates this principle perfectly. It's a self-improving coding agent that evolves through self-reflection and recursive learning using an evolutionary process rather than brute force scaling. As Hassenfelder notes, Hassen, Hassenfelder, Hassen, Hassenpfeffer, wasn't that a Bugs Bunny cartoon? Cook, where's my Hassenpfeffer? Yeah. Oh. As Hassenfelder notes about similar approaches, the remarkable thing about this approach is that, in principle, this AI could throw out the language model parts and build any kind of new program. But there are still significant constraints. Each mutant must run and score on benchmarks within minutes on whatever compiler they can afford. These constraints mean that the changes are currently small and incremental, but they represent a fundamentally different path to advanced AI. One based on, as I've said, elegant design rather than brute force computation. Elegant design instead of brute force computation. Come on, guys. And it suggests that the Tech Brothers' nuclear-powered data centers might not be with a winning approach after all. The real concern isn't that these self-improvement approaches won't work. It's that they might work too well once the constraints are removed. As Hoffenfelder, Hassenfelder asks, what will happen if you remove these constraints and put the thing on a supercomputer? Maybe we will soon find out. But see, none of us think that, that we will because the Tech Brothers won't yield and try this. You know, they're all trying to outdo each other. And the implications are profound. If smaller, more efficient models with better architecture can outperform massive models, 
And if self-improvement happens through algorithmic innovation rather than raw scale, then the Tech Brothers' approach to AI development might be fundamentally misguided, to say the least. This doesn't mean AI won't continue to advance. It absolutely will. But it suggests that the immediate AI takeover scenario that tech executive, executives are predicting assumes that simply throwing more money and computing power at these problems will lead to exponentially more capable improvements. You know, this, this is starting to seem otherwise, suggest otherwise. The real advances might come not from companies building nuclear power data centers, but from researchers finding more elegant, efficient approaches. I need to do a better job with my words. That's like the sixth time I've used the word elegant. I, I've got a journalism degree. What's wrong with me? And no, AI is not writing all my scripts. They write some of them. I'm not stupid. I let it build me an a outline, but it didn't say the word elegant six times over. Even if that's not, it's not that stupid. Just me. Anyway, the approaches to AI architecture and training, you know, should use more efficient approaches. And those approaches might take longer to develop than the Tech Brothers want to admit. So while we should absolutely take the potential of AI seriously, we should be skeptical of the timeline being pushed by tech executives who have every incentive to hype up the capabilities of their technology, especially when the actual research suggests their approach is hitting diminishing returns. I bet they're crap in their pants right now. I mean, they're watching their they're watching their their ticker symbols go up and up and up, and they're knowing that their returns are going down and down and down as far as what's happening and and what they're accomplish, accomplishing. You know, Klarna had to recall all those people because the way they're doing things just isn't working right now. It doesn't mean it won't work. It just means they're on the wrong path. Ugh. So you know, the Tech Brothers they want us to believe that everything's about scale. Bigger models, more computing power, more data. But the breakthroughs from Sakana AI, DeepMind, and other researchers suggest a fundamentally different reality. That intelligence isn't just about size, but about architecture, method, and elegance. Elegance. Maybe size doesn't matter after all. <laughs> yes, I am concerned about that. This means we likely have more than time than uh, the doomsayers suggest. And that's what I've been talking about, guys. It's not that I didn't think it was coming. It's that we have more time because those in charge are going the wrong way. The path to more advanced AI might require fundamentally new approaches, not just scaling up existing ones. So while Meta spends $14 billion on talent accusa uh, accusation acquisition, and actually more when you think about it, $14.3 billion was just for one guy. You know, they're offering $100 million bonuses and sometimes more than that for others. So it's, it's more than $14.3 billion at this point. The real breakthroughs might come from unexpected places and might follow a timeline very different from what tech executives are predicting. The digital apocalypse is, is still coming. Don't worry. We're all screwed. So, you know, don't, don't worry. We're all still very much screwed, probably, but thanks to the Tech Brothers' misguided approach, we might have more time to prepare than they'd have us believe. That's all I've been saying. So thanks for listening. See you in the next episode. <laughs>